Okay, thank you. Welcome to City Mesa Planning and Zoning Board for Wednesday, June 17th. I am Vince Tabello to my far left, Michelle Dalkey, Michael Clement, Lisa Hudson, Susan Johnson, Suzanne Johnson, sorry, <laughs> Shelly Allen, and Steve Akita. Uh, welcome, board members. Um, any more blue cards? One, one minute and do some housekeeping here. twice we're going to be starting with the consent agenda so if there are any more blue card cards out there please uh give to the staff members and we'll we'll continue on all right thank you all right uh first or item of business would be uh, reading of the consent agenda Ms. Dalkey. item 2a is approval of the minutes from the may 19th and may 20th 2015 study sessions and regular hearing Item 3A is case Z15011, District 2, 4418 East University Drive. This is located east of the northeast corner of University Drive and Greenfield Road, 0.38 acres. This is a site plan review to allow for the development of a two-tenant retail building. The staff recommendation is to table this item. Item 3B is case Z15017 in District 6, 10025 East Southern Avenue. Located east of Crisman Road on the south side of Southern Avenue, two acres. This is a site plan review for the development of a restaurant which, with a drive through The staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item C3 is case Z15018, District 6, 6807 East Baseline Road. Located east of Power Road on the south side of Baseline. It's approximately one acre. This is a site plan review to allow for the development of a retail and restaurant building with a drive through the staff recommendation is approval with conditions subject to the revision of stipulation number seven, as we discussed at our earlier study session. Item 3D is case Z15021, District 3, 1665 South Stapley Drive, located north of Baseline Road on the east side of Stapley Drive. This is one acre. This is a site plan review to allow for the development of a restaurant in an existing retail center. The staff recommendation is approval with conditions. And item 4A is KZ15019 in District 5, 4702 and 4706 East Virginia Street, located north of McDowell Road and east of Greenfield Road. This site is 2.2 acres. This is a request for a rezone from GI to HI and site plan review to allow for the expansion of an existing industrial development, and the staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Great, thank you. Um, is there a motion? June 17th, 2015 meeting. Okay. Is there a second? A second. All right, please vote. And motion carries. Thank you. If your case was on the consent agenda, you are free to leave the building. Or hang around if you'd like. But Okay, our next case, um, or last year, last and only case, is um, Z15-020. 6400 block, excuse me, 6400 block of East Test Drive, west of Power Road, south of Superstition Freeway, modification of existing PAD overlay uh, in, an under, in an LI zoning district. This request will allow for the development of auto sales on the site. Ms. Davis, would you like to give an overview of the project? Thank you, Chair, members of the board. This is a request, uh, Z15020, a modification of a PAD overlay and a site plan review for 3.2 acres at Superstition Springs Auto Center, lots F and G. Uh, the PAD modification um, would allow for the development of um, auto dealership on lots F and G. 
Um, the dealership includes an 11,000 square foot showroom building and a service building as well, and display of vehicles. Um, the modification also includes a elimination of stipulation 14F, which is has to do with the lighting on the site. Uh, lighting has been, of course, standards for lighting has been updated, and they're going to be using LED lighting. Um, in addition to stipulation number 16, they've asked for an elimination of 16, which would allow for the um, auto dealership use. Uh, in addition, there's PAD modifications to setbacks. Um, the building setback reduction request is from 25 and a half feet along Test Drive, as well as along uh, Superstition Springs Boulevard, and a reduction in landscape setback adjacent to circulation and um, parking of from 10 and a half feet to 10 feet and eight feet clear adjacent to display areas um, required is 10 feet in those areas. Um, to give just a little bit of background of the site, it was zoned in 2001, which includes that ordinance um, uh, eight, or 3889 that we're uh, amending or modifying at this time. Uh, since that time, there has been two other applications in 2003 and 2008, and both of those were withdrawn. Um, the neighborhood participation, there was a neighborhood meeting that was held in March, um, and there are some letters of support from Economic Development um, Office as well as from the EDAB board, some letters of opposition, 24 letters of opposition um, that are in your report, as well as a letter from the uh, Superstition Lakes Condominium um, PED, uh, HOA rather. Um, the site plan itself, um, staff is recommending continuance of the site plan. It doesn't meet those PAD uh, stipulations in regard to setbacks, um, but is recommending um, approval of the change to, or amending stipulation 16 of that ordinance and eliminating 14F of that ordinance. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay. Any questions at this time? No. Is the applicant present? Or would they like to uh, make a presentation? Commission. My name is Wendy Riddell with the law firm of Barry Riddell and Rosenstiel, 6750 East Camelback. And it's my pleasure to be here today on behalf of Joe and Jeanette Cardinelli and the Cardinelli Auto Dealership. Our request today, as you know, is the elimination of STIP 16 from the PAD to permit the development of a new auto dealership on parcels F and G within the Superstition Springs Auto Mall. Um, I should mention that we are agreeable with staff's request that there be a development agreement limiting the uses here to an automotive uses. We are also requesting the elimination of stipula stipulation 14F so that we can include a better and superior lighting solution permits us to, to utilize LED lighting. And we're also requesting PAD modification. Um, we had been requesting and are requesting site plan approval, but if it's the pleasure of the commission to continue that, to continue to work through site plan issues, we are certainly willing to do so. Uh, I will, as part of this presentation, be walking you through some of the changes that we have made to date so you can understand the hard work that we have been engaged in with the neighbors so far. So I never, I know it's never very encouraging when someone who gets paid by the hour gives you a table and contents in the beginning of a presentation, but I wanted to just give you an idea of all the material that I hope to cover here from zoning history an auto, why an auto sales use is appropriate, the improved site plan, improved lighting, economic benefits, of course, the general plan, and then the neighborhood outreach that we have been engaged in. So to start, um, back looking at the zoning history, in 1998, this site was rezoned, initially from ag to C2, for a hardware store, retail, and pad sites. I'll point out to you, actually, and one of the themes, if there's a theme of this presentation, is that staff had it right. Staff at the time actually was opposed to this, this particular use here. Um, they recognized that this was an isolated site and felt that C2 was going to be challenging if you look back to that staff report. Interestingly enough, um, the Superstition Spring condos themselves, really at this, right around the same time, when they were rezoned, they are rezoned to C2, and they have a bonus intensity overlay which permits the development of a six-story hotel with 250 rooms, a conference center, and then initially 134 casitas that later evolved into the condos that you see there today. Sort of interesting to note that the underlying zoning for those condominiums today 
is actually C2 with that bonus intensity overlay. So going back to our site in 2001, I think as this commission is now well aware, this site was rezoned to permit the auto center at Superstition Springs. Um, staff at that time supported the overall use and everything that you see here included within the blue um, was actually rezoned for the auto center, auto mall, pardon me. And looking back at the staff report, you think, why did an auto mall make sense? And it really boiled down to three very clear reasons. The first is that Mesa recognized the significant economic benefit that comes along with an auto mall. Recognized that auto malls actually have a significant decrease in traffic to the site as compared to C2 uses. And they also recognized that this site is indeed access challenged it's isolated, it's an isolated site with very poor street presence. And in fact, the, the image you see below is Google Earth, nothing more than taking the little man and dragging him down to the street. And you'll notice there's significant drop off from the edge of the street. You really can't see this site from Superstition Springs, which is why it's very challenging as C2 and appropriate for Auto Mall. So at the time, there was a stipulation that was included for parcels F and G, stipulation 16 that limited the permitted uses back in 2001. This is the site plan that was approved at the time. It's probably important to note, um, by the way, that when I say staff got it right, staff opposed on the record the inclusion of that stipulation. They did not believe it was appropriate. So if you fast forward to today, and I have to be a little bit delicate about this because one of these applications was indeed done by my client, but there were two previous attempts to come back and to modify the stipulation to allow an auto use. And to put it politely, I don't think that they did it right. I don't think that they appropriately addressed the concerns or really attempted to address the concerns of the neighbors. And so if you look at the plan, this was a previous plan in 2008, you'll notice that they had the cars right up towards the entrance of the condominiums, that they actually had the showroom and the building oriented directly towards the con condominiums. And there really was no buffer. There was no attempt to address the concerns. So what's changed today? Well, as I'll demonstrate as we get through this presentation, what's changed is we have a superior site plan. We are offering a third of an acre of landscaped open space as a buffer. We've got better building orientation and a superior lighting solution. The other thing that has changed since 2001 is the market. So back in 2001, there was an expressed desire to have sit-down restaurants. Here today, sitting on Google Earth, within a mile, all of these restaurants exist as sit-down restaurants. What hasn't changed? What hasn't changed is an economic benefit that a proposal like this offers the city of Mesa. With an estimated sales tax of exceeding 1.5 million annually and 40 new jobs. That changing the use from C2 to an auto, automobile sales use is a significant reduction in traffic. And the fact that physical characteristics of this site have not changed, that it has limited access, poor street presence, long, narrow, isolated, and is frankly just undevelopable as C2. And if you look down, you will see the traffic comparison straight from ITE when you compare the sit-down restaurant versus the traffic that would come as part of an auto sales dealership. It is less than half. So as I mentioned, I wanna walk you a little through the evolution of the site plan and the changes that we've been working on, frankly, since April of 2014. So this is just a conceptual plan. It was part of the 1998 plan that was shown on this site. And when we first began back in May, we looked at ways to improve upon the proposal. So as I mentioned, you'll see that there's a third of an acre of landscaped open space intended to create an entry, a sense of place for the condos, that they don't, they don't have that visibility of the dealership. It really reads as a landscaped open area. We have reoriented the buildings towards the interior of the site we relocated the service parts to the far end of the site, as far away from the condos as we could, that we thought would function. You'll notice on this plan, um, one of the things we actually showed was the service drive, kind of in that eastern portion of the building. 
Um, and as you do this comparison too, we also compared it to an existing C2. And again, with this improved site plan, a third of an acre of landscaped open space, reorienting the buildings. And of course, in a moment, I'll talk about the lighting solutions. When you compare this plan to if the property were developed today as limited commercial, and I, get, I will confess, I get my acronyms confused, LC and C2, but if it were developed today as commercial, you would not have this type of open space buffer. You would have more than double the traffic, and you would have more lighting pollution. So as I mentioned, the evolution of the site plan. This was our first submittal. One of the things we did as we were getting input from the neighbors was relocate the service reception then to the north side of the driveway, north side of the building, I should say. You'll notice we still had the landscape <coughs> buffer. And then as you fast forward, as we continue to dialogue with the neighbors who would engage with us, um, and I should mention it was somewhat challenging. I became much better at technology using GoToMeeting because the majority of these neighbors um, don't live here. But when we're able to work with them through GoToMeeting and take their comments, we were asked to push that building as far to the west of the site as we could. Um, and that's what you see here before, before you. This is actually the site plan that's before you. One of the challenges that we had in doing that is that it pushes the building to the narrowest part of the site. And that's what initially um, precipitated us asking for some of the deviations in the PAD. But that was expressly done out of the request to move the building. So our proposal at the time um, for a deviation from the setbacks, you will see we were requesting a building setback, a landscape setback, and a landscape setback at the display. Once we got staff's feedback, we went back as a team, we reevaluated yet another iteration of the site plan. And we do believe that we can meet the landscape setback at the part being, landscape setback at the display. But the building setback, if we are ultimately to keep it here at this narrowest portion of the site, I'd like to preserve the ability for that setback to actually be 20 feet, which is consistent with the underlying zoning. I recognize we're gonna to continue to work through site plan options, but I do feel that I owe it to the neighbors that have asked us to push the building there to try to preserve that as a viable option as we work through some of these site plan issues. So lighting, probably the single biggest concern that we heard from the neighbors related to lighting. And has, staff has again told you, we have a far superior lighting solution. We've hired a lighting expert. I now know more about lighting than I ever cared to know. Um, and we have incorporated LED lighting. We're able to lower the poles. We're at, I mean, essentially half the maximum foot candles, dramatically reducing the average foot candle, um, both in the front row and on the overall site, and incorporating the latest technology to make sure that those lights are dimmed at night. So one of the neighbors was kind enough to let us into their back patio and into their home so that we could do a photo simulation and demonstrate to them what that would actually look like. And that's what you see in front of you. And you'll notice when you look at this, also why some of the neighbors had asked that building to be pushed to the western part of the site. Because there is already some mature landscaping there that screens that eastern part. And then with the building to the western part, it helps screen it further. So moving on to the economic benefit. Um, I think it's probably pretty obvious to anyone here that an auto dealership has a significantly better economic benefit to the city of Mesa than a vacant undeveloped parcel does. Um, actually, the Economic Development Advisory Board gave us a unanimous recommendation of approval. They reviewed the PAD amendment and on a unanimous vote endorsed the rezoning. They recognized that it was also consistent with the general plan and helps Mesa provide a strong economic base. When you break down the numbers, it's 4.5 million of capital investment to an otherwise vacant, underutilized site. It provides jobs for 40 plus employees with a combined annual salary base of 2.4 million. Generating annual sales tax revenue for the city of Mesa at 1.5 to 1.7 million dollars. I wanna to touch briefly as well on the general plan this particular site sits in the mixed-use activity district, which specifically calls out automobile dealerships. It's also on the tail end of a transit corridor, and it also sits in the economic um, activity district for the Superstition Power Road, where it specifically talks about an opportunity to grow 
employment, which of course is what we're here requesting today. I want to talk a little bit about neighborhood outreach. And in the outreach that we have done, it really came down to five issues. And I want to demonstrate what those issues are and then what we've done to try to address each and every one of those issues. The first is a desire for a buffer zone from automotive uses. And of course, our answer is a third of an acre of landscaped open space between the condos and the use, reorientation and ultimately relocation of the buildings away from the condos. Second, light pollution. As I've shared with you, we've changed LED lighting with full cutoff, lowered the poles, utilized neighborhood-friendly optics, cut both the maximum average foot candles in half, utilizing remote Wi-Fi to ensure dimming at night. Noise. We moved the buildings away from the condos, enclosed all the service uses within the building, eliminated the car wash, and ensured that no outdoor paging system will be used. Traffic. As I've shared with you, an automotive use as a destination will generate significantly less traffic than the approved C2 sit-down restaurants, less than half. But finally, there was one concern that we simply are unable to address, and that's the neighbor's stated desire for a public park. They have put together an exhibit designing the park for us, and they have suggested that my client should donate to the city of Mesa. And that's simply one accommodation we're not willing to make. I will share with you, and I have them here, 100 plus signatures in support. If you look around to the broader Mesa community, you look to the commercial businesses. They strongly support this application. If you look to the other automotive uses within the PAD, they strongly support this application. So finally, in summary, I'm going to give you kind of my top 10 reasons that we hope to achieve your support today for the rezoning. The first is because a thriving automotive dealership is better for Mesa than a vacant, undeveloped parcel, because it provides dollars and jobs to Mesa, because it's consistent with the voter-adopted general plan, because it reduces traffic in the area, because we have presented a superior lighting solution, because we are providing a third of an acre of landscaped open space as a buffer at the entrance to the condominiums, because we have reoriented and moved the buildings to reduce any perceived impact, and we remain committed to working with not only the neighbors, but with the commission, with staff, to address through site planning any concerns that we can address because we have worked hard with the neighbors to address their concerns and that we have support for a hundred, from 100 plus property owners in the area and surrounding businesses. And again, because we're committed to continuing work with the neighbors and staff. And finally, because 14 years is long enough for this site to be vacant in a mixed use activity center and it should be put to productive use. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you for your presentation. You know, any questions at the moment? Yeah, I did have a question. Yeah, this seems like a really small site for an auto dealership. What type of a dealership is it? Um, Chairman DeBella, uh, Chair, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Johnson, um, we're not sure specifically which brand will be there, but I can tell you that my client owns 16 dealerships, represents nine different brands, and it's everything from Volkswagen to BMW, um, and he believes and feels confident that one of them would want to go there. And then you also mentioned ensure no paging system. How do you do that? Um, we actually um, use phones today, that, that type. We just won't install any kind of paging system. There would be the a facility. restriction also in the future yes. that no outside paging system. That's correct. Okay, thanks. So you said you had 100 letters of support. Mm -hmm. I only see two. Is there a reason we only got two? You know, um, if I could, Chairman DeBella, Commissioner Aikido, we continue to gather support out in the community. We have them here right now. You're welcome to look through. Well, it's kind of late. I can't review them or see where they're from. So, um, you know, it's it kind of surprised me to see that that you mentioned that. Okay. Just just comment. All right. Any other questions? I have a question. So, have you made any efforts to market the property for the allowable um, pads? It just kind of seems where we think it ought to go. 
Um, yes, again, Chairman Nabella, Commissioner Clement. Um, Ted Merrick, actually, the broker for the site, is here oh, this really? evening. And he has been marketing the property for the last four years. In fact, we bought brochures that I'd be happy to pass out that we've been utilizing for the last four years. Um, I additionally, I spoke with the broker who had the listing prior to that, uh, and he also discussed with me his um, significant marketing efforts and strong belief that this site needs to be automotive. So, so my thought would be on that, um, and I have some thoughts, but you know, for everybody to know here, I am a commercial real estate appraiser pro professionally, and so I'm very much aware of what highest and best use and changing markets are all about, and land rights, which I obviously believe someone has a right to do something with a piece of land. Um, but my thought would be is, if indeed they are, the hope is, or they were approved there was an agreement to keep them as retail pad sites. I'd just really like to know, how well have they been shopped to potential retail users? I know you talked about restaurants and that the sit-down demand has been fully exploited. So what are some of the options and what kind of interest and comments have they got from potential users over the years that they've been on the market? If I could, Commissioner Clement, I'd love to defer that question to Mr. Merrick. He sure. could stand up as the broker if, if the chair believes now that's an appropriate thing to do. He has filled out a card, I believe, as a speaker. Um, I'd actually like to, to cover all these at the same time, but if, if he can answer a direct question as part of your group, then so be it. Yes, I have a Why don't you come on up, Ted? Name for the record. Okay. My name is Ted Merrick. I'm a real estate broker in Arizona. I've been a broker here for 40 years. Um, I've had my sign under for f four years, and I didn't get one call off of it. I put all 17 Cracker Barrel restaurants in the state of Arizona, so familiar with restaurants. I put a number of other ones also. No restaurant wants to go on the south side of the street. There's eight on the north side now two hotels, one closed restaurant that's been for sale for an awful long time. So I do not know where you'd get the restaurant to put there or a hotel. What about an office property like the one across the street? Well, that's, that's got a lot of vacancies in there also. I was out there today again. So you know, it's just an odd piece of property to be very truthful with you. And why won't retail work? even if he could find the user. I don't think it's working on the north side, to be very truthful about it. I don't think restaurants, I think though they do very poorly on the north side of the street there at the restaurants. Uh, unless you can correct me, I, I believe I'm correct there. Now, Jim Brewer had this before I did, and he had the same success. I did none. So I really don't know. I told Mr. Carney to call Wendy and see if she could help him get this rezoned for cars. There is another vacant parcel down the street that Larry Van Tyle just purchased. And uh, it's just, a, it's a car town really there. I can, I can add one other quick thought. Mm -hmm. um, I also um, spoke with Jim Riggs, who's a pretty well-known office developer. What prompted me to call him is he's actually the developer who built the office condos that, are, that replaced the hotel conference center for the uh, Superstition condos. Um, his direct quote, I have it in an email I'd be happy to share, was he wouldn't take the property if we gave it to him for free. That he saw absolutely no market for office. Um, that the existing condos that they built, frankly, it took far longer to absorb um, than he um, hoped. And um, didn't believe that office was a remotely viable use here. Interesting you say that. I actually appraised a lot of those back in the day. And it was a disaster. It didn't work. And that was designated originally as a hotel site. That's right. Interesting. Even with all that golf course frontage. Yep. That is, I, I, I agree with what, what he had to say. I want to ask one other question. Was that offered for sale or for ground lease? It would do anything. What was the price <laughs> point? Uh, I'm asking $6 a square foot for it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any, other, any other questions, comments? Could you go back to your um, proposed site plan that had the building... The Certainly. building on the corner, just I'm curious about something. Forgive me, I already mentioned I'm somewhat technology challenged, so we're just working our way back here. <laughs> Actually, the, the one oh. previous to that. There you go. Um, so this is something you had worked out initially, but based so on some input from the neighborhood, you, you 
proposed site plan that's been submitted as part of the package. That's correct. This was our first submittal. Okay. And this is actually, if I remember the staff report, um, this is kind of something what staff was suggesting initially with moving the building to the corner. Is that correct? Chair, members of the board, yes, we were actually looking at or asking for maybe the entire building to take up the corner with no parking and circulation on that south and, and, and east side. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We have several. Uh, thank you. We'll stay tuned. I'm sure there will be more questions. We have several speaker cards. Um, we'll just call you up one at a time and uh, state your name and address for the record. No particular order here. Um, you'll have approximately three minutes to speak. Um, unless you represent a larger group, we'll offer you some more time. We'll start with uh, Mr. David Peterson. Uh, you wish to speak and you're opposed uh, to the case. Thank you very much. It is good to be here today, and I'm delighted, Mr. Chair, to meet with you and the members of the board. This is a uh, very important case. It's important to the neighbors who are affected directly by it. It's an important case to the city of Mesa because it has a promise attached to it that was made to the citizens of Mesa in 2001. We believe as a conscientious neighborhood of citizens that this case is uh, quite clear cut actually. Stipulation 16 provides in very specific terms that quote, permitted uses of lots F and G shall be limited to C2 now LC uses only. It stands for what the American founders called the immutable principle of moral obligation. That is a promise. It has to do with, in fact, the public trust. At the negotiation that led to the approval of the auto mall by the council, there was, in fact, an argument by DMB, the developer, that they would, in fact, in, in a letter to us by their attorney, uh, this is Karen Taylor's letter of April 9th, 2001, where she stated to us, in response to neighbor concerns, we have agreed to limit the uses on these pads, lots F and G, to only C2, limited commercial uses. The auto retail, retail portions of the property are proposed to be located more than 900 feet from the closest residential unit in your community. The majority of the residential units are located much further than 1,000 feet. This was the linchpin agreement. You see, the city council negotiated, the community negotiated, and this was a compromise. A compromise was reached that, that the council would approve the auto mall. However, there had to be a buffer zone, a 3.2 acre buffer zone. That makes us smile when the presenter today talked about a one-third acre buffer zone. This is a massive decrease. In fact, there was a requirement that there be a substantial 3.2 acre buffer zone. That is, has been in place now for 13 years. And there is a working relationship. We have a good relationship with those automobile dealerships on that auto mall. But this generation of a buffer zone was really critical to the approval by the council in 2001. Now to disregard that promise, that pledge, is really a matter of, I think, an obligation, a promise on the part of the city to keep that promise to the citizens of the Superstition Lakes community. We believe that this proposal is contrary to the general plan of Mesa. Let me cite just two examples. Provided on page 4-3 is this statement. It has to do with the interest of the plan and the intent. Quote, avoiding incompatible land uses and providing appropriate transitions between uses, particularly when developing or redeveloping neighborhoods next to or near higher impact employment areas. 
Well, we have an appropriate transition portion in place. That's the, that's the point. That was approved. It meets now the criteria of the general plan to put an auto mall in a neighborhood, a community, a residential community, is an incompatible land use. It does not fit in with the transition that was needed and, and recognized in 2001. A second point from, this is my second point from the general plan, to strengthen the character of the residential community. This is part of that thrust. Many of you were involved in the drafting of that. It's a neighborhood-oriented document. It says, page 7-5, within neighborhoods, non-residential areas should be designed and located to bring people together and not disrupt the fabric and functioning of the neighborhood as a place where people live and maintain their investments. We believe that for many of these retired people in our community, this represents their biggest and greatest investment of their life savings. They want to have the security of a beautiful place to live their declining years. So in fact, to put this auto mall in the backyard of those 60-some property owners is contrary to the intention of the neighborhood thrust of the general plan. Indeed, the, the staff report says where there are some, while there are some potential negative impacts to the neighborhood to the south and east, these can be addressed through appropriate site planning and, de and a development agreement limiting the uses of lots F and G. That's what we have now. We have an agreement with the city. That's the thrust of stipulation 16. You see, we have that agreement. There doesn't need to be any more agreements on the uses of lots F and G. That's approved by the city council. That's in place. And we request that you honor that, that pledge of the city. It's been authoritatively addressed. There need not be any adjustments. In fact, there, is so many, there are so many negative features of an auto mall directly in the line of sight of the patios and the beautiful circumstances of these residents. We feel it is an incompatible land use. It's out of character of a neighborhood. You see, it's an incompatible thing that is, is being recommended. Mr. Peterson, I, I know you're real passionate about this, but I've given you extra time here, so if you can Thank uh, you very much. wrap up your thoughts and we'll move I on. Surely, I surely will. Let me just say that uh, we recommend that the uh, board and the city council should not approve elimination of stipulation 16. It is a part of your public trust. It is a part of the authorities and the government of the city of Mesa to continue that pledge and promise to the citizens of our community. Secondly, we hope that you will endorse the essential protection which we've had now for 14 years to endorse again a transition zone, to endorse again as wise public policy and good government the sustaining of this position, which has been in place now for these years in a good working relationship. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Any questions? Are there any questions? I have, a, I have a question. I believe you've seen and talked with the uh, Cardinal Way about their changes in their uh, landscape and their site plan. Uh, how do you feel about uh, the changes they, they have made? Well, there, there seems to have been a secret uh, go-to-meeting because we were not invited to the go-to-meeting. Whoever attended that, I do not know. But in fact, we would not be convinced that this is an improvement. In fact, this provides for such a limited buffer. You see, moving buildings around on those 3.2 acres, putting up inadequate uh, floral trees and such. So you're not, not aware of the part. meeting of the changes in the... In the plan, is that correct? Yes, I attended the public demonstration that was made at a public school about two months ago in March. We attended that. We expressed our concerns at that time. And we believe that, in fact, the, the fundamental question has not been answered for our satisfaction. I don't think any of the kind of revisions that we've heard today or that you've seen in the documentation provided would satisfy the needs of the Superstition Lakes community. It is a residential community. It's a beautiful place. This would destroy, in fact, the kind of community that people have come to rely on through the promise of their elected government. We urge, again, that you vote against the elimination of Stipulation 16, which has served so well. 
Thank you. Um, Mr. Klein. Yeah, Mr. Peterson, yes. I appreciate your, your thoughts and your position on this, and I, I can appreciate where you're coming from. Um, going to the back to the fact that we don't want to change 16 and leave it to some sort of a commercial, limited commercial use, what do you actually see going there if restaurants is not the answer? I mean, I would, get, I would get some fireball developers that don't sit back and wait for calls, that go out and promote this property. Look, it's equidistant between two major medical centers. The medical centers exist. This is equidistant. I could see doctor's offices. I could see advanced technology going on that site. It's a limited site, but it has tremendous potential for medical uses and offices. If you look around the corner, over on, uh, I guess it's a baseline, you see a, a professional setting there with some 20 offices for co cosmetic surgery, dentistry, all kinds of things. If any of those had been proposed for this uh, lots F and G, the neighborhood would be delighted. It's just that we do not see an automobile dealership as being compatible with our community. I think there is a whole range of other uses that would be very agreeable to us and very successful on that limited, granted it's a limited 3.2 acres, but it still could be used very advantageously. So, in your mind, an office would be a logical alternative use? Is that what I Indeed. Mean? Professional offices. Yeah. I think there could be uh, other kinds of public uses, uh, perhaps uh, uh, recreational or, or uh, kind of uh, athletic clubs. Uh, we, we are serious in proposing a park. We know they don't like that idea. They'd like to do something more remunerative, but indeed a park, something that would be the uh, Cardinale name emblazoned that would bring uh, a great to benefit to the community. There are other things, though, and I only suggest that the end of this is not an auto mall. We need to promote and use common sense and the promotional capacity of the members interested in this site to make it something that is beneficial, not only to the community, but to the residents there that are faced with this, this site across from their, their homes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Ted Merrick, um, you wish to speak and you in support of the project? Okay, I'll try and keep you to three minutes. Yeah, my name is Ted Merrick. Uh, I'm the broker on this particular piece of property. We have asked a lot of uh, office developers to look at this. Nobody will even look at it with us. So I don't know how you force somebody to build something that doesn't make any sense to them to build. Uh, any questions? Nope, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Donna Elliott, do you wish to speak? And you oppose the project. Again, name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Donna Elliott, and I'm at 6535 East Superstition Springs Boulevard, Unit 134. My husband, Ron Mitchell, and I bought this condo um, in October of last year, we did so in good faith that that particular piece of property was zoned as it is, and so that the impact in our in terms of our um, our investment in the condo would not be compromised. What I'd like to say is that while the previous speaker spoke of our declining years in in our uh, investment in the property, that is certainly true. I'm not willing to admit that up to the declining part, but I will admit to the fact that we've made a major investment in this condo. And therefore, to build a con a, 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 an auto mall there where we were promised that that property had been zoned otherwise really does compromise our investment, which is serious to my husband and I. No one has talked about uh, our HOA hiring an, uh, a real estate appraisal or a consultant to talk about the impact of the property values of these condos if, in fact, this project went forward. I think it, at the very least, if you consider going forward with 
proposing this to the council, that, that we should be allowed to do that at Cardinale's expense so that we know exactly what sort of hit we're going to take in our investment where we live. Some made the comment that most of the people don't live there. Well, we've all made a considerable investment, and my husband and I do live there, as do many people. And so what are we going to have to face as homeowners as a result of this. I agree with the previous speaker. If you're building something small and inobtrusive, but if you're, you know, the previous promises made of, of 220 trees planted by Cardinale that were going to, they going to pay to water for five years. They never paid, to my knowledge, a water bill. And most, most of those trees are now dead. Ditto the, the uh, talk about no outside paging system. It's very simple to install an outside paging system, and no one's going to monitor that after the fact. So in summary, I'd just like to say that as you consider this, please consider, as I'm sure you all have, the place where you live, and, and uh, you buy that in good faith. And promises have been made in the past and rulings made, as the previous speaker indicated, and I'd like to see those honored. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Fran Corson, you wish to speak, and you oppose the project. Mr. Chair and Board, my name is Fran Corson. I live at 6535 East Superstition Springs Boulevard, Mesa. I live in Unit 203. You have heard the facts from this case, and you'll hear more. What I have to say are strictly feelings and emotions from my heart. Before it was even construction constructed, I invested all I had in purchasing my unit at Superstition Lakes Condos. In 1999, I was actually the second owner to move in. I can vividly remember standing on the ground where my new home was going to be built, where I planned to live and then retire. I remember admiring the view, a beautiful golf course, the gorgeous Arizona sunsets, and the unbelievable serenity of it all. I had just moved from a very green Oregon, and this was going to be my oasis in the desert. Within a couple years, the conflict and stress began regarding auto dealers. There were homeowners meetings, meetings with Cardinale people, and the City Mesa hearings, none of which were enjoyable. The result was our lovely community now is located next to an auto row. Fifteen years later, the conflict still goes on. Originally, an attempt was made to block lighting from the dealership by planting rapidly growing trees and plants. For me personally, all this did was block the beautiful sunsets. I now look at trees instead of skies. For me, the more serious consequence is noise. I no longer enjoy a peaceful evening on my deck. I have no sunset, just noise. I live 24-7 with unrelenting unrelenting noise of cars and rat rattling car delivery trucks, whose usual delivery time is around 4 a.m. The well-intended speed bumps now serve as speed-up spots. I can actually tell what time certain employees come to work. They insist on revving their engines as loudly and in shortest time possible. I believe naming the street test drive somehow gives people the idea that it was meant that they should do this every time they drive on the street. I would like to interject something here that should be considered by the Mesa Department of Transportation. Because of the increased traffic between Test Drive and Superstition Springs Boulevard, the traffic light is seriously useless. It allows one car at a time to go on to Superstition Springs from Test Drive. I've witnessed many near accidents because people become so frustrated. But to the question at hand, I will simply say this. I would be happy to invite any one of you to come spend 24 hours in my unit and see what car dealerships do to your level of stress, your lack of sleep, and a general peaceful life. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, Pat Esparza, you, you do not wish to speak, but you oppose the project. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Jeanette Davidson, you wish to speak? Thank you, sir. You oppose the project.
we? What you thought would happen anyways here that the one person is. Rate this with and and speak at the same time. We used to have somebody over here that did this for us. Okay. Well, name and address, and then are you representing more than yourself or to other other groups? Thank you, Mr. Chair and Board. Good afternoon. My name is Johnette Davidson, and um, I direct you to the picture on your screen. I live at six five three five East Superstition Springs Boulevard, Unit two hundred five Mesa, Arizona. And the picture you see on the screen is from my condominium. That's my view. I hope you wake up to a beautiful view like that. I'm here today speaking on behalf of myself, a homeowner. And as the president of the Homeowners Association, which incidentally unanimously voted to oppose any rezoning of lots F and G, and specifically I received emails from 24 homeowners who've asked me to speak on their behalf most of whom are retired and plan to spend their final days at Superstition's uh, serene condo setting. How many of you were here on this board in 2008? I didn't think so. I wasn't recognizing any faces or names. I do recognize Michelle, but you were in a different capacity then. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I only have three minutes to defend $25 million worth of real estate. So this is going to be like drinking from a fire hose. So watch the screen, listen up, and I'm going to talk fast. Okay, I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the history of the Audemars. In 2001, DMB Associates successfully petitioned to have several lots rezoned from C2 to M1 planned area development where the Audemars now exists on Test Drive. Concessions were granted to the homeowners by the city council of our community by designating lots F and G as a permanent buffer zone between the industrial Audemars and our residential community. This designation was made for perpetuity by the seal of the city of Mesa. In addition, the city council addressed further concerns of we homeowners. Concern number one. Um, go ahead, Jim. And Concern number one, lights reflecting off bumpers and windshields. Solution, a lighting specialist was called in to reduce the glare. Result, we still have homeowners who have to pull their blinds at night due to the glare on their television sets. And we contact people in the Audemars and they adjust the shades and whatnot, but it has been an issue. Concern number two, use of public address systems in the Audemars. Solution, they are not going to be allowed. Result, on special events, they have used public address systems there. Concern, street parking on test drive. We didn't want to see on, the, on, on our side of, the, of 60 what was happening in the autumn mall on the other side of 60. Solution, we're not going to permit them to park cars on the, on the road. In 2006, my husband Dale and I sent city officials pictures of 85 cars parked on the streets belonging to employees, clients, as well as unlicensed inventory. The city of Mesa did take action, and that has not happened again, and we thank you for that. Concern, the visibility of car lots from condos compromises our aesthetics. Now, they put in, and, um, and Donna, I appreciate it. You weren't here then, but I was, so you're pretty close in number. They put in a buffer zone of 256 trees on the golf course 
at DMV's expense. They agree, DMV agreed to this, and they were to be maintained for five years by DMV. Okay, I want you to keep an eye on these pictures now as, as my friend Jim scrolls through them. That did not happen. The golf course never received a penny for water. Of the 256 trees, only 85 remain in poor condition, as you can see. Uh, they're stunted, and they're not effective as a screen between us and the Audemars. You can see some of these. I don't know where they will ever go. They're so, so stunted. Um, another concern was the very lot that Cardinale developed their Mazda dealership on. There was a caveat that we were supposed to have the opportunity to preview the architecture of what is now Cardinale Mazda. That did not happen. And the result was, as you can see, here's, here's some of the other dealerships. Low-slung, um, stucco-type dealerships. Infinity. Keep going. And now we come to Mazda. Okay, we got a gaudy orange and green corrugated building. It's not compatible with our com community architecturally, nor with the rest of the Automall itself. I was really surprised the Automall didn't take issue. All this to say, um, in 2008, the Planning and Zoning Board emphasized that Mesa is a mixed land use development, and this is true. However, good judgment should prevail. You would not put a tire store with its noisy compressors next to a nursing home. It would be inappropriate. You would not locate a prison yard next to a nursery school playground. It would be inappropriate. A car lot next to a residential neighborhood is likewise inappropriate. We say that past performance, go ahead to the end, Jim, past performance is the best indicator of future behavior. We've had lots of failures to date. We would request that you keep your commitment to the homeowners of, Su of Superstition Lakes condos. Please vote no on the removal of any restrictions currently in place on lots F and G and protect our property values. The aggregate total is somewhere between 20 and $25 million. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you. Any questions, board members? No? Thank you. Thank you. Timothy Wright, uh, you wish to speak, and you oppose the project. My name is Timothy Wright. Uh, I reside at 6535 East Superstition Springs, uh, Mesa, uh, Unit 218. Uh, my unit is a second floor unit, and uh, it has a direct line of sight view of the proposed development. The scenic view from my patio uh, was the deciding factor in my purchase of, of the unit uh, eight years ago, and I live there on a year-round basis. I'm very concerned that the expansion of the auto mall on lots F and G would detract from my enjoyment of my home and decrease the value of my property. The proposed lighting and structures are unacceptable to me. The existing lighting is a distraction already. The probable increased traffic is incompatible with this residential area. Incorporation of stipulation 16 limiting the expansion of the auto mall was key to the city council's approval permitting the development uh, of the auto mall in uh, 2001. Elimination of this stipulation would be a violation of the citizens' trust in their government. Therefore, I respectfully request that the Planning and Zoning Board and the City of Mesa, uh, Mesa City Council disapprove the Cardinale Automotive Group proposal to eliminate stipulation 16. Any Thank questions? You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Joshua Meyer, uh, you wish to speak? You don't state whether you support or oppose. I guess we'll find out.
Chairman, uh, Commission members, my name is Joshua Meyer. My uh, office is at 3220 Lakeside Village Drive, Prescott, Arizona, 86301. And I represent Tierra Partner 7, which owns the office building that's directly across the street from this property. I'm the manager of the limited liability company that owns the building. And I neither oppose or support this application. My only concern is the fumes that come from the auto body repair facility. And I apologize to the applicant for not raising this issue sooner. I didn't know it was an issue until I was at the building today and I was speaking with our property manager. And he said that when the winds are right and the weather's nice so our HVAC system brings in outside air, that the, our tenants have complained about the fumes from the existing auto dealerships that are even farther away from where this one would be built. And I was kind of surprised by that. I thought <clears throat> ADEQ, air pollution regulations or whatever would take care of that, but apparently they aren't sufficient. So I would ask the commission that if you do recommend this for approval, that you would add a condition that there would be some type of scrubbers uh, on the exhaust fans or something so it doesn't emit any, any fumes from the auto body facility. And just to comment on an earlier statement that was made, we're a little over 85% full occupied, so I wouldn't say we're doing too badly, but anyway. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm available for questions if there's any. Thank you. Otto Schill, you wish to speak in support of the project? Members of the board, my name is Otto Schill. I'm at 40 North Center Street, uh, just across the street. I'm speaking on behalf of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce in support of the applicant. Uh, Mesa has this kind of issue all over town. We're dealing with it near the airport. We're dealing with it in a number of places where we've allowed residential communities to grow up near uh, commercial developments, and it's a difficult issue, and, and the people who live there have, have difficult issues to deal with sometimes, and we're sensitive to that. We support this particular proposal because the surrounding area has developed to such an extent in a commercial direction that it just doesn't make sense to hold out one small piece of property. Um, over the years, Mesa has lost uh, sales tax revenue from dealerships that have moved away from downtown and other locations. At least in this location, we've collected auto dealerships in a singular area, and it allows them perhaps to stay in Mesa instead of going to another community that might be, uh, might be more open, might have more land available to, to plan with. So we are sensitive to the needs of the residents. We think you ought to consider screening uh, measures that would make them more comfortable, that would protect them from light and noise and, and design issues of that nature. Having said that, we think that it's appropriate for this one last piece of property to, to be developed in the same way that the remaining development uh, has been developed so that we can retain the sales tax revenues, the economic benefits of the businesses that are there and that support one another. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Applicant, have any last comments you'd like to make? And yes, thank you. Just very briefly, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. You know, it has been suggested to us that this is a moral issue. And with all due respect to the neighbors that are in the room, I would suggest to you it's really a land use issue. And we do recognize that change is hard. I don't like getting older. My declining years, I don't look forward to them. Change is very difficult inside of any community. Um, but change is what is needed for a community to evolve. And community leaders like you, like this commission, um, that are willing to make change for the best interest of Mesa as a whole, have brought us things like a baseball stadium or a Mesa Center for the Arts or light rail downtown. Communities have to continue to involve, and that does require change. If this property is not rezoned to an automotive use, it essentially is not viable for development. You know, the neighbors have said to us they really want this as a park. You hear buffer what they want as a park. And that's really condemning my, pro my client's property to not be developed. And I would suggest to you that that is not in Mesa's best interest as a whole. We stand committed, ready, willing, able to work through all the site planning issues to try to address any concerns. But I strongly suggest to you that the land use issue here needs to be automotive. 
I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. As far as a recommendation for this case, staff is recommending uh, approval of the amendment of stipulation number 16, amending the language to just open the door for the auto sales dealership, not for all uses that would be allowed in the LI district. There is a table of allowed uses um, attached to the staff report as well that would clarify all of those allowed uses or permitted uses. Um, in addition, we um, are in support of the uh, elimination of stipulation 14F having to do with lighting. Of course, the LED lighting now allows for the much lower uh, light poles. Um, however, are not in support of the PAD modifications in regard to the setbacks, and we are re um, recommending continuance of the site plan. Okay. Board members, discussion, comments, questions? Start with Mike. You, well, I'll start with me. Yeah, you, you raise your hand first. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just were looking at Steve. He, no, he was late. He, he was late. He, he was kind of halfway there. So. Okay. You know, after our study session and um, thinking about it and, and reading the materials and the position of the of the property owners, I thought, you know, I need to go out there and sit on this site. And I did. Right after the meeting, I went out there and I sat there for about a half hour and I watched traffic roll in and roll out, roll in and roll out. And I'm thinking, okay, a couple things here. First of all, I noticed that the subdivision isn't directly impacted by this parcel anyway. There's a huge buffer there already. It's the golf course. The, the, subdiv the homes are in a linear fashion away. So all that's really impacted other... Now, there is one home right there facing the project, but they're facing a commercial use regardless, knowing that it's been zoned for a, for, um, a C2 use for, what, 14 years now? I mean, that's a long time. So I'm thinking, okay, so what do we do with this? We know that um, we're, everyone, we're holding out preferably for a buffer, but you know that isn't logical in terms of land use. So we're looking at a C2. What works? Well, are we going to get... Restaurants in there? Probably not. The way that parcel's configured, there's no way for traffic to, to, to loop in and out of the arterial fluently at dead end, so it becomes very destination. So I'm saying, okay, so what else would we put there? Well, staff, if I might ask, in limited commercial, is an office building an allowable use? Yes, it would be an allowed use. It would be allowed use, okay. So I'm thinking, okay, so if we're going to use this site and we're going to try to posture it for an allowable use, well, then the next logical thing would be an office. Well, it would be similar to the office across the street because I'm going to want two stories at least, possibly three if I can get it if I'm the developer. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to have adequate parking. So I started to think, man, I'm going to have a C of cars, just like I do across the street, if I have an office use, which is, again, it wouldn't be a low density, but I would try to maximize it as a developer, whatever the zoning allows. And then the thought came to me, so what are we really talking about here? What I see is w the property should not be diminished if, if we choose to go forward with this. Um, or I should say the neighbors should not be diminished in their rights. And if we stay within the confines of a, of a limited commercial use, similar to what we see across the street, that would then enable us to go back in a different, in different setting and design a property that actually looks and smells like an office building with office parking. The other thing I would say is, is what I saw as I sat there is, that, you know, there already is a little buffer, and I can see the road that, that, that need, and so maybe... We create a little green belt there, and if we need to, let's put some retaining wall in place if, if that's what it takes. But in terms of direct impact on any of those condos, in my opinion, there really is none. Anyone buying in there is already aware that it has the, the smell, the feel, and use of an automobile, a commercial-related use. Anyone seeing that vacant land, knowing that it's zone C2 and has been for a while, can anticipate a continuation of some sort of commercial use. 
So what would be changed? Well, it would be impacted if we have some real heavy industrial use generating all the smog and a lot of commotion. But with the restrictions I'm hearing and what the applicant's willing to do, I don't hear that at all. Actually, I hear something with proper guidance that's more friendly to the neighborhood than what is actually allowed by the C2. So in reality, as I'm, and I'm looking over some of the arguments in terms of diminution to property values, I personally disagree with that. Um, as far as a development agreement, you know, I, I see those, I work with them all the time. They're constantly changing. They're being modified. That's just the way it is. As market conditions come and go and they change, we deal with that. They're dropped. Developers will spend lots of money to create them, and if the market changes, they just go away many times because the use is no longer viable. Um, I also picked up, as we were talking today, that the proposed use aligns with the general plan. Okay? So that's not an issue. You know, the backyard, the golf course is the primary barrier. It's not going to affect the investments, the setback. You know, again, we could play, and this would be my suggestion to staff, let's work to create a buffer that creates a small park setting, perhaps a little bit more than what the applicant is asking for, but to take the whole piece and say it should remain as it is, to create the buffer, I don't believe that's fair to the property owner, regardless of what was signed some what, 14 years ago. Let's see, the other thought I would have on that is, um, again, it, 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 what I really hear is if we hold it to C2 and we know that the market is not supporting any kind of office development, which it is not, you wouldn't put any office condos in there. You wouldn't put, you know, it's not next to the hospital. It, it is a destination site. I mean, it's just going to sit vacant for a long time. So if I didn't want that to ever be developed, I would argue to keep it C2. That's so basically I create my buffer. But I don't believe that is necessarily fair to the property owner. Um, as I listened to the concerns, I really didn't hear anything that would suggest to me that a properly designed project that would be less imposing than what could be developed under the C2 category, you know, I don't see how it impacts anyone. And it sounds to me like we can posture the building to look like it would be a garden office building because that's what I would put on there if I'm the, assuming the market will support it. You know, there, there are a lot of factors that are going into support. You just don't build an office. It's got to make economic sense, like everything. It's still going to look and have the smell of some sort of an automotive use. So I would say, just as what's come up, but let's be careful how we allow it to be signed. Maybe it's a less intense than what they're proposing. Let's give it the feel of a, C, of a C2 use. I really like the comment about um, the uh, the emission, so, you know, the idea of scrubbers on exhaust fans, I mean, that's a good comment. I think that ought to be considered <clears throat> to make sure that it doesn't take away any more than what the neighbors already have or impose upon them any more than what the property owner has a right to use based on alternative uses and what its current highest and best use today. Sorry to be long-winded. Okay. So I personally, I'm just going to say I'm, I'm in support of it with some guidance to make sure that some of these concerns that were addressed, particularly by Mrs. Davidson um, and Mr. Peterson as well. And I think they can be. I think there is a solution here at the table. Okay. Anybody else on this side? Sure. Uh, this, this one has been really tough for me. Um, and I literally read every single item in this packet, all of the attachments, the handouts, everything. Um, and I think I've decided that I can't support the elimination of Stipulation 16. Um, I mean, I truly appreciate the, the, the development team and your experience and your analysis and your arguments. I, I totally uh, appreciate that. Uh, but I just think in this particular case, it's not the right thing to do. Um, I'm not opposed to change overall in the city. I'm a big proponent of change. But I think in this particular instance, uh, we need to maintain Stipulation 16 uh, and I do hope and believe that the property can be developed with another use over time. I think we're still recovering from a lot uh, just economically, so we, we've been challenged anyway 
with development. But um, I'll just leave it at that. Those are just my two cents. Um, and I, again, I can't support the elimination of stipulation 16. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chairman uh, DiBella. You know, I would agree with a lot with uh, what board member uh, Clement is saying. Uh, and if there was an agreement between the homeowners and uh, Cardinal Way, you know, I'm all for it. However, I don't think there has been. And uh, I think what really resonates in my mind is that, uh, again, the city and the developer has, uh, I know the current developer didn't do it, but the city and uh, the property made a uh, promise that there's going to be a buffer there. Now, uh, if, again, there could be an agreement made between uh, the, the developer and the association, I'd be all for supporting that. However, there is none. And I'm afraid that uh, trying to uh, make the change now with that, without that kind of agreement uh, opens the door for future types of uh, things that uh, may uh, happen in, uh, for other people. And for that reason, I'm, I will not be in support of this, uh, of this case. Right, did I? I? I thought long and hard about this um, case as well, and I took a drive out there and take a look at it. And and my feeling is I, I can't support this case either, and only for the fact that um, I believe it, the the original, even though you know clear back in two thousand one or nineteen ninety nine or whatever this uh, development agreement was made or that the ordinance is attached to this zoning case, that. Um, these folks bought obviously bought their condos in good faith um, that that's what the city said that that's what the city we agreed to uh, the mayor signed the ordinance and and for me it's hard to go back on that one I understand that development agreements change all the time I get that I've seen it I understand the economic impact um, and I appreciate uh, uh, mr. Schill's comments about that about the econ economic impact in the Chamber of Commerce and that I come from the Office of Economic Development, so I understand all of that that background and what a benefit it would be to the city. However, I think also it's, it's I guess, my opinion that we need to uphold the agreement that was made initially. And so just for me and for those reasons, I won't be able to support this project either. Okay. Suzanne? Um, yeah, I took a look at this. I've, I'm very familiar with this project. I knew the original developer that built the, um, developed the Superstition Springs condominiums out there. I knew a little bit about this situation. I'm a commercial broker. I'm a big believer in um, personal property rights. But my understanding is this property was bought with that known, that ordinance in place, that known risk. And so that was a speculative decision on the property owner. The people that are living in Superstition Springs, they've worked very hard over the years to have that buffer in place and to come back every four or five years and keep fighting to keep something that they were promised. I, I just not supportive of eliminating Ordinance 16. Okay, um, I guess I'll chime in here real quick. Um, I'm not, I don't think we're ready to throw in Italia here. Um, all of you know me, I don't, I'm not a big proponent of continuing a case, but I don't think the applicant has worked hard enough to solve the issues. And I think the residents out there, um, just allow yourself to take the blinders off for a minute. And, and what I mean by that is um, you have a unique opportunity here uh, that doesn't usually come about, meaning that you can get a very site-specific design accomplished. You have a voice in the development agreement with that site just allow yourself to examine that a little bit and really you got everyone's attention. And so I think you should take that opportunity to take a little more time to figure it out. Um, and, and you may come to the same conclusion, but it just doesn't feel like this has been solved by any stretch. And I really don't like the idea of running, a, you know, on the way that the, the approvals are written to the recommendations written to run the development agreement up the flagpole, the city council, while you work out a site plan, I, I don't see how you can separate that. Um, so you know, I, this is my last zoning meeting, so <laughs> I, I, you know, I could say I don't, I don't have a bone to pick here, but I do. I, I think um, it's really a case where I think 
if one more effort was given and really got the neighborhood involved and make that concerted effort, um, I think the residents have a golden opportunity to make something cool here uh, and work for their property. And they know, they're, they know what they're going to get uh, from here on out. Because um, if, if it goes away and something else comes in, you're not going to have the same degree of control or, or, or commentary that you can make on some other type of development. So I would just implore you to, to take one more shot at it um, before, uh, you know, decisions made on, on your behalf. That's, so that's you'd be for, con, uh, for continuance of this? Well, matter? I'm just throwing it out there. We're going to do that for council, too, because it's still going to council. So, so having said that, if uh, I think that's a great idea. Somebody would like to make a, a are motion. They, and then, are they agreeable to the well, you know, I think we forced them to, to take a shot at it. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, no force is necessary. Yes, we are agreeable. Staff, if that's okay. With, with that being said, then, um, are we ready to make a motion? Yes, call for a motion. Um, with that being said, then I would, I would move that we continue uh, case number Make sure I got the right one. Z15020 um, until the July 15th. Do you think one month is enough? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Thank you very much for recognizing a point of order. I found uh, in this discussion no basis for an agreement with the proponents of an auto mall. There is a fundamental incompatibility. I don't believe that we can work towards any kind of compromise with the auto dealerships that are proposing this. I believe we should, with all due respect for each of you, call the question and take it to the city council. Thank you very much. Um, before you leave, so uh, Mr. Peterson, uh, if what uh, board member uh, Clement has mentioned that maybe, uh, let's say an office building does go there, three or four stories high with a lot of light, and they may not have the technology that, the lighting technology that Cardinal Way has, uh, would you not be against that then if uh, that's the case? We would like to see that proposal, of course. You can't appro approve a hypothetical. But uh, indeed, uh, this proposed auto dealership would work from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m., seven days a week. Office buildings are not quite that intensive in their use. We think that uh, the parking issue for an auto dealership is different than the parking issue for a, uh, a general office building. This has inventory. The dealership has inventory there every night and day with light bouncing off inventory automobiles, reflecting off the sun and off the indirect lighting. So we think it's difficult to find a compromise, though I think an office building would be much preferable to an auto dealership. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, there was a motion. Was there, I didn't hear a second, but... So what was the motion? The, to continue? the motion was to continue, but I don't think we got uh, a date. Like uh, <clears throat> Chair uh, Borden Brown, uh, in discussing it quickly with the applicant, uh, uh, the applicant's representative, her client is not actually here in the room to discuss dates with. It was going to be rather quick to turn it around by July okay. a meeting, but we could continue to then, and then we may, from there, go ahead and continue to the August meeting to, to really have time to get something done. But that can okay. work. And I will second that because I still think there is room to come to an agreement, noting that they could put an office use that's pretty intense on the property and establish some guidelines to limit the extent of the auto mall influence. So. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Uh, please vote. Yeah, I'm sorry. What was the motion was to continue? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. The uh, motion passes. So the case is continued. Thanks for everyone's energy here. Oh, to... wait a second. I'd like to say one thing before we adjourn. <laughs> uh, I already called it. <laughs> uh, this is um, Vince's last planning and zoning meeting. He's been here for six years. He's reached his term limits. And I 
I've appreciated working with you on this board. Thanks. And as a resident of the city of Mesa, I thank you for your service. Okay. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Thank you. We're going to miss you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you.